What's going on guys, Mike here, back in the aquarium lab. If you read the title of this video, you already know, I am officially a craw dad. I'm super excited. We're gonna check out the babies here in just a second, but I gotta also say I've learned a ton about these crayfish in the last few days. I'm excited to share all that information with you, and hopefully, you know, my struggles as, you know, learning about these new invertebrates will just end up helping you if you decide to go down this road. So, let's go ahead and check out the tank. So the last video update on the Avatar tank, I was super bummed out and while I was editing that video, you know, I could see like just how my tone was and it was kind of just like a really sad video in general. This one is not gonna be sad, it's gonna be super happy cause like I just said, I am a craw daddy. So there's a baby crayfish right there, you can see him, I don't wanna get too close so it blurs out. I'll probably overlay in some images I do with my other camera. But we got, I think, close to like 15 or 16 of these guys total in the tank. They're really good at hiding. Um, there's no surprise there, but there is some baby crayfish. I am super stoked, especially since we lost the dad. I am the new craw daddy, guys. I mean, I was sort of like, you know, the stepdad all along, but now with the, their actual dad out of the picture, I can officially say that I am the dad of the crayfish. And you know, don't get the wrong idea, you know, I'm not, I'm not the jealous type, obviously, I didn't intervene, there was no foul play between me and him, I was okay with being the stepdad, okay? And I honestly sort of preferred that, you know, I liked knowing that he was around, he was gonna be, you know, their official father, um, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. So here we can see a little interaction between a baby crayfish and a Sakura Red. It's sort of like, you know, the, a typical, the typical interaction between uh, when the mother crayfish comes into contact with one of these shrimp, except it's the opposite. So the crayfish is the one that does the, you know, the backward skirt, tries to get out of the way. They're pretty, they're pretty clever little guys, I think. And, uh, you know, I'm just really excited to watch them grow. But these guys are super tiny. I mean, we just saw the comparison between that sort of average sized Sakura Red compared to one of these guys. You know, they're, they're really hard to spot unless they're on the substrate like this one because obviously they have that contrast of white to the black substrate. And I'm not sure when they're gonna turn orange. You know, I don't really know anything about raising crayfish other than, you know, what I've experienced so far. So I'm super, super interested to see when they start developing some pigment. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated 100% through this process. And, uh, you know, this is, this is just awesome. They really like to hang out over here on this right side, although I've seen them pretty much all over the tank. Um, they're, they're definitely not scared of much. They're traveling around, they're looking for food, and I'm making sure to keep, you know, I keep food pretty much all throughout the tank now. Before these guys were here, I would pretty much only feed in the front, but I'm thinking about, you know, them and where they're at. So I'm sort of, I'm sprinkling in the shrimp cuisine throughout the tank just so, you know, if, if there's some in the back corner, they don't have to move, they don't have to venture out of, you know, the moss, where I think a lot of them are hiding, and I think that's gonna help to make sure that I have a good success rate as far as, you know, raising up the juveniles to, to medium-sized adults. When I first saw that I had babies, there was a bunch of them back here, and, uh, you know, they're not there right now. I've seen them, like I said, all throughout the tank. Let's see if we can see some over here. There was a few back here earlier. Nope, there's a mono shrimp there. They're not going to be back there. They, uh, they're pretty skittish, you know. I, I feel like they're smart, and I think a lot of them are hiding back here now in the moss, which is a good game plan. And mom crayfish over here has been doing some really weird stuff. Now that she's not, you know, carrying any young, she's back to doing sort of her weird old tricks. She's been trying to escape the tank like all day. And this is new behavior. She recently just sort of emerged and you know hasn't been super shy lately. Um, again, the last day really is all. Um, but she's been doing this all day. She's been trying to climb the side of the tank. She actually made it up like halfway over on this side and then flipped back you know, down on her back, which was pretty hilarious. But uh, I don't know, you know, I, I had an interaction, I witnessed an interaction between her and a baby earlier and it wasn't, you know, I was kind of worried that she might attack the baby and eat it. The thing is, is that she really only seems to mess with the bigger shrimp. I mean, if there's a baby shrimp nearby, you know, the, the baby shrimp will get out of the way quick. She doesn't, you know, 
I haven't seen her take any baby shrimp down. And since the crayfish are so small, I'm wondering if she would even mess with them, you know, but like I said, I saw them kind of interact and you know, the, the baby crayfish had to get out of there quick. So I, you know, I don't know. I might, I might take her out and I have a little five gallon tank over here. I'm thinking about just setting up a little aquascape in here. So I might be doing that in the next couple of days. Not a hundred percent sure, but yeah, I don't know. She, uh, she's acting strange. Let's see if we can find some more babies. They kind of like, it's weird, I'll come out to the tank and I won't see any, and I'll freak out and think that they're all, you know, they're all gone. Um, but then I'll come out, you know, a few hours later and there'll be, a, you know, a group of like six of them that are all pretty close together. So, I don't know, I'm not really seeing anything now other than that, just that one. But uh, the, the images that I overlaid onto this video were from, I think yesterday when I first saw them, I busted out the, uh, the good camera to make sure I got some footage of them, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm not I'm not seeing any other any other babies. Okay guys, so we're jumping 2 days ahead in the future here. You can see I've trimmed some of the moss on a few of the rocks here, exposed some stuff that was covered by that moss, and just overall have been spending a little bit more time doing tank maintenance over here. But here's the thing. In the last 2 days, I've learned a lot about crayfish in general. This is some information that I chose to be a little naive about. I was aware of it when I first got them and I did the wrong thing by assuming that these crayfish would do just fine in this tank's environment. This tank's environment is a lot different than the other tanks that I've been setting up lately. So the big difference, again, is the substrate. It's an active substrate that's gonna reduce pH, it's gonna reduce KH, and it's gonna reduce GH. And that's really, really important. I underestimated this substrate's ability to alter the water parameters, and here's why it's important. This fluval stratum substrate is used by people who wanna keep shrimp, who wanna maintain a lower pH that they don't get naturally out of the tap, or you know maybe they're not using RO water, so it's, it's hard for them to maintain an acidic environment that the shrimp prefer. A lower total water hardness is something that the shrimp also really appreciate and so this is a common method for people who want to soften their water is to use active substrates like this fluval stratum and like ada aqua soil that's going to do the same thing but this is actually one of the reasons why we're having some issues with the crayfish the male had that problem molting which caused him to die the crayfish these cpo crayfish require a moderately hard water environment. And that's because you'll find these guys in a few lakes in Mexico where the water is a pH that's not below seven typically and has a moderate water hardness to it. So when we put these organisms in a tank that has a pretty low pH, I mean 5.5 to six, and on top of that we put this organism into a tank that has super soft water, the KH is far too low than what it should be in this tank. The GH is like one to two on a good day, but it has you know a hard time staying there because the substrate actively reduces that concentration. When we put this organism in here, you know, it, it might not do well. And I was naive to that. I assumed that it would be fine, and I think that's the real root to all the problems here. And these points were made very clear to me by Rachel O'Leary. You guys probably know her, you probably subscribe to her. She's got a really great channel. She knows way more about fish and inverts than I do. So I really appreciate her for doing a great job at reminding me that, hey, that's probably why I'm having these issues. So I'll put a link to her channel. You guys can go check that out. Make sure you subscribe to her. Thanks again, Rachel, for pointing out um, my, my overlooking of those important details. And it just goes to show you, you can never underestimate what an organism experiences in the wild and may require in the home aquarium. And actually guys, there's a lot of things that are wrong with this tank. And I plan on making a full video about why this tank in a lot of ways kind of sucks. And so, I mean, I know that might sound a little over dramatic, but honestly, this tank, you know, besides the fact that I think it looks pretty cool and a lot of you guys do too, you know, from an environmental standpoint and a parameter standpoint, it's not the best tank. And again, I'll explain all of those details in an upcoming video. 
So what I've started to do in this environment to help make it better for the mama crayfish and especially the babies is I've started to try and raise the water hardness slightly because again, if that's the problem that the male had with molting, which it probably, you know, 100% now I'm, I'm on board with that was the reason why, you know, he died. I'm raising the GH. I have my own little, it's basically the exact same thing as Seacam Equilibrium. It's just a homemade batch. I've been adding that to the tank to raise the GH to at least two. So I've been trying to keep it from, you know, two to four, which is a really good water hardness for any planted tank. And it'll be fine for everybody in here. And hopefully it'll be enough for the crayfish. So I've been doing that along with, I set up a new little tank over here for the mama crayfish, who I'm gonna swap into here as soon as it gets all cycled and all ready to go. Um, and you know, then my biggest problem here is the babies because you know, I don't really wanna move the baby crayfish into a whole new tank, and it's also gonna have a, a higher, you know, overall water hardness, which is gonna, you know, hopefully be perfect for them, whereas this tank, it's not perfect, and, you know, we might lose a lot more babies because of that. I don't really wanna move them into a new tank that's so different because I don't know how sensitive they're gonna to be to that change. Um, just logic tells me that, you know, a, a new organism, a baby organism of anything, moving, you know, into a tank that has not vastly different parameters, but, you know, a fairly big change, that's not gonna be good for them and I could end up losing even more just by doing that. So again, I'm just trying to raise the GH in here a slight amount, but again, my substrate is going to pull that concentration down. So I'm, it's kind of a mess right now. I, you know, I, I don't wanna tweak things too much. I don't wanna mess up anything else in this tank, but I gotta do something. But I'm pretty confident that if I keep everything the same in this tank and I don't do anything, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna lose most all of those babies and I definitely don't want that to happen. So the Avatar tank continues to teach me new things. I've learned so much from this aquarium already. And you know, sometimes you have to learn things the hard way. And I guess the moral of the story is, don't be naive to information pertaining to water parameters of certain organisms, especially these inverts, you know, because certain organisms do need to have certain parameters to exist. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll hope everything goes well in this tank over the next few weeks. We hope that we can start to see those babies a little bit more often. And I really hope that they don't end up all dying. But you know, at this point, it's kind of, it's, it's up in the air, guys. So wish me luck. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you appreciated this update. Maybe you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.